Hey, Phil. Hey, man. How are you doing? Not too bad. Let's talk about the environment. Yeah, okay. Uh, work environment, right? No. Um, school. School environment. Also no. Um, urban environment. No, you fool. The environment. Not a problem. I've got my pens. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome. This is Michael. And I'm Phil, and you're watching the IELTS Grind. Remember to like and subscribe. And we also have a Facebook page. Yeah, a Facebook group as well. Okay, so um, Mike wants to talk about the environment. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to do first of all is just to prepare a little bit, to think a little bit about the vocab. That way, when I do come to talk about the environment, I'm going to knock him out of the park. Yeah, he's going to have things to say, and he's going to be using high-level stuff. Yeah. So all you need for this is some lovely pens, either your notebook or a piece of paper. Okay. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're just going to brainstorm some ideas to do with the environment. Yeah. So, so let's do that. So I've got a bit of paper here. Uh, me too. So let's put the, pens. the pens in the middle. So make sure you make this nice and beautiful because you want to look at it later on, right? That's right. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just to come up with some general ideas, some vocab. And then the next step, what would make that better? Uh, coming up with questions that use that vocab or yep. sentences that use that vocab. Yeah, so we use it actively. Exactly. Okay, so let's get going. Ready? Go. Okay, I think I'm done. I've got a, quite a few things here. Yeah. Let's let's take a look. Can can I guess we're probably gonna have pictures pop up that yeah, show these better. You can see it better, yeah. But okay, so basically what I decided to do was I split it into I spoke about disasters. Mm -hmm. I spoke about Me too. some yeah, some common issues. Okay. So overpopulation, things like that, yeah. that cause uh, issues with the environment. I just came up with terms. Just things to do with the environment. <laughs> so I had flora and fauna, okay. uh, pesticides, you know, these kind of okay. words are to do with our effect on the environment, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just said types of environments. Types of environments. I like that. Yeah. I, I had something similar. I, I also had natural disasters here. Um, and I actually used a higher level, level word than oh. types. I used the word biomes. Yeah, that's good. That's yes. better than types. <laughs> types of environments, biomes. I also have this really cool thing that I liked where I had a number of the temperature-based biomes and then a little scale that says cold and hot. Okay, so that's quite, that's quite cool yeah. to remember that, yeah. Okay. Arctic all the way down to tropical. Mm -hmm, I got yes. that, yeah. Did you get equatorial? Ooh, no. But oh, did yeah. you talk about marine environments? No. <laughs> <laughs> but this is good because I'm going to steal that from you. Uh, and put it into my my notebook later on. And this is what you guys should be doing, is looking at our vocab lists uh, that we have on the screen. We actually have three of them yeah. popping up. And if you see terms that you like, steal them. Definitely. Yeah. Um, by the way, just to quickly go over my categories as well, things that harm it. Uh, so we have pollution, uh, or you could use pollutants. Oh, nice. um, and then deforestation, desertification, dead mm -hmm. zones in the ocean. And then I also have ways to help. Um, but I'm really proud of this little thing under ways to help. I had use fewer resources, but then I also had use less electricity and use less water. So next to the countable nouns, like resources, I underlined in a different color, fewer. And then under the uncountable, I underlined less to really make sure that I was learning that vocabulary. Definitely. Uh, so if, if I was studying and I had a partner like uh, Mike, just great. I could steal so much stuff from him. He does all the hard work and I reap all the benefits. So this is a, a good thing. <laughs> just like high school. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good thing for studying with other people because mm -hmm. not everybody thinks the same way. Not everyone has learned the same phrases. And by sharing, you're all going to learn much more. This is true of so many parts of yeah. learning IELTS, right? Definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so now that we're a little bit prepared, we've got some of the vocab, we've also written down a few little phrases mm -hmm. here and there. Um, let's think about some questions. Yeah, so first we want you guys to pause the video and come up with a few questions yourself using this vocabulary. What type of questions do you think you would see uh, when you were talking about the environment? 
Okay, so uh, did you come up with any questions? If you did, why not write them in the comments and uh, we can uh, share them with everyone else watching. But we already came up with a few questions. A lot of questions. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is answer them. Yeah, um, and just so that you guys can see them, uh, we are going to be putting them up on the board and maybe highlighting some of them as they come yeah. up. Uh, and yeah, listen to our answers. Uh, oh, sorry. Before we jump into that, actually, we should try to organize our questions. Because one common thing is certain vocabulary terms only really go with certain questions. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how about we do that first? OK. So how, what are some words that we can follow after how can we stop? OK, so we would have to have nouns. So this must yeah. be, if we're talking about environment. Or noun clauses. Noun yeah. clauses, yeah. So if we're talking about the environment, it must be things that are harming the environment. Mm -hmm. So we've got things like, um, you know, the bushfires, mm -hmm. uh, droughts. So how can we stop bushfires? How can we stop droughts? Yeah. Uh, how, how can we stop people stealing our vocabulary? Well, that doesn't really make sense with the environment. <laughs> But yes, those kind of things would make yeah. more sense. We wouldn't say, how can we stop um, biodiversity? Yeah, that's weird. Although it fits grammatically, um, it's not the logical. The doesn't yeah. fit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more example using a noun clause. It's also on the screen for you, I'm sure. How can we stop species from going extinct? Species yeah. from going extinct. That makes sense. There's, n there's not a second verb. It's a noun clause, so you need that ing. Species from going extinct. OK. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are other questions we have that we could okay. uh, talk about? So the next one we've got here on the list is uh, what do you think of or what do you think about? Mm. So what might fit with this one? Again, it, it will be nouns. Um, usually something that's a bit controversial. So uh, what do you think about GMOs? What do you think about overpopulation? What do you think about logging? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, we also have another question, which is, should mm -mm, be made illegal? So with this, we're really, it's a subject, right? Mm -hmm. And it's quite similar to what we had before. So it would be a bad practice. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't say, should um, saving should. the environment be made illegal? That's it also illogical. wouldn't fit if it was like, should bushfires be illegal? Yeah. It needs to be a human activity. Yeah, yeah. Should bushfires be illegal? How dare you burn, you tree? So, for example, <laughs> should uh, over-farming be made illegal? Or should uh, uh, hunting be made Ill illegal? Should GMOs be illegal? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look at this next one. Should we... Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, this is a suggestion. Um, so, should we stop logging our forests? Should we stop building dams? Should we stop recycling everything. So it's just a suggestion. Yeah. OK. The next question is, uh, why do you think we should use less water? Yeah. Why do you think bushfires happen? For these ones, your answer is going to have to be a reason, which we'll be getting into very soon. Yeah. Next up, we also have, what should governments do about? So this, again, has to be something negative that the governments can stop. Yeah. So what should governments do about overpopulation? What should governments do about logging? Yeah. Not what should governments do about plants. Doesn't really make sense here. No. Yeah. And unfortunately, like these are questions that we hear students say. This is why we're doing this section. Yeah. And how about that last one? How uh, would you? How would you? So how would you uh, prevent a drought, for example? How mm -hmm. would you prevent um, a bushfire, perhaps? How would you fix overpopulation? Mm -hmm. And these are solutions that you can come up with. These are your answers. Which is very unfair, because it's not your responsibility, really, is it, to come up with this? It is, though. So. Yeah. If we all do a little bit, we can save the world. It's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Are you ready to answer some questions about the environment? Let's I'm, get going. Let's go. Yeah. I've got, I'm ready. I've got my vocab. We've got all the right. questions. Yeah. Hit me. Phil, how can we stop deforestation? Well, I think there are several ways that we can stop deforestation. Um, initially, there needs to be some sort of government involvement, uh, sanctions against people over logging mm -hmm. forest areas. But I think also um, we need uh, a lot of education for the younger generations, 
because these are the people that will take up these jobs in the future and they need to know the negative effects of deforestation. Which would be easier to implement? Which would be easier to implement? I think the government. Okay. The government involvement, because there's a lot more resources behind this, I'd imagine, and when left to the individual, uh, I don't think people have the motivation to change, whereas if they're forced to, it's much easier. By the way, guys, we're only going to do this with this very first question, but a really quick analysis. He gave a great answer, not only because he used really high-level vocabulary, perfect grammar, blah, 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 blah. Don't his, belittle that. <laughs> <laughs> his, his structure was really good. He directly answered the question first, and then he gave his supporting details. This is the structure you should be using. Answer the question first, and then expand on it. Um, second thing is, uh, just like on the test, uh, the examiner will push you after you give your initial answer to see if you really know what you're talking about, if you can continue to support it. That was why I asked the second question and you saw Phil's eyes get really big yeah. and go, oh my god, I have to think of why. It's panic. <laughs> it's panic, isn't it? But the thing is, if you know this beforehand, you know it's a good thing mm -hmm. because they're trying to help you uh, really expand your ability to to answer it, which will help you get higher band scores in the end. Okay, payback time. Okay, so I'm going to give you the same structure question, but okay. a different one. Uh, how can we stop uh, species from going extinct? Uh, I think the single best way to help other species from going to extinct is by get ridding, getting rid of all of the humans. Right now we are we, we are in the middle of the sixth extinction event, and it is human-caused. And so if we get rid of all the humans, maybe send them into space, uh, maybe if they all die off, then uh, it will save all the other species. Wow, that's a bleak outlook. <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps it is quite effective. <laughs> so um, again, we don't want to analyze every single answer, but the thing I just wanted to point out there is very different to what I did. I went for kind of a list answer. I presented several different reasons for my answer, whereas you went straight for the heart of the issue, which is us, <laughs> us the dirty human race ruining the planet. <laughs> and you supported it well. Okay. Right, so hit me. Okay. What do you think about uh, Taiwan's wastes management policies? Um, I would have to say it's quite different to what I'm used to back home. Um, I know in terms of sort of infrastructure, the, the piping work, the plumbing work is quite different. Uh, so in the, the home, uh, you can't flush uh, anything but waste down the toilet. And this kind of has led to a bit of a, a, a difference in lifestyle. Uh, but in terms of uh, the actual waste uh, collection, I think it's quite good because they collect it every single day. I don't know if this is because of the, uh, perhaps it's because of the sort of environment, the, the climate maybe. If you leave waste too long, it will, it will rot. But in, in those terms, I think that Taiwan's sort of waste management has pros and cons, but it's generally quite positive. Uh, your answer was so thorough that I'm not going to ask a follow-up question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, did you like my little summary there? Yeah. I went back and I summarized what the question was about, right? Yep. Okay. That was a clear sign to the examiner. I'm done. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Hit me. Okay. So, uh, what do you think of GMOs? Um, I think GMOs have the potential to be very dangerous if there isn't government oversight. But I also think that it can solve a lot of the world's problems if it's used well. Okay. Now, I think this is good, but I, I think I would have liked you to paraphrase what a GMO is. Ah. That would have shown, although your answer did fit, I think this might have shown exactly what, uh, what it was about. Do you want to try again? Fine. <laughs> he doesn't like it when I do this. <laughs> okay, hit me again. Okay, so what do you think of GMOs? I think GMOs, you know, genetically modified organisms, are potentially dangerous. Um, you know, in the media we see a lot of horror stories of what could happen. <laughs> like this. <laughs> of what could happen. Yeah, the GMO carrot. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there isn't enough um, government oversight. Uh, however, I do think that it 
has the potential to solve a lot of our problems of you know world hunger, um, using too much water in agriculture, and those kinds of things. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So next question. Okay. Should hunting be made illegal? Well, this is quite a controversial issue because there are some people that definitely support it, uh, and some people who are definitely against it. I'm. I'm not really sure which camp I'm in. Um, on the one hand, hunting as a blood sport, I don't agree with it. If it's just for pleasure, um, it's quite cruel, I would say. Fox hunting, for example, is an issue that a lot of people are against in the UK. But then again, um, there, are, there is the argument to say that in certain environments, uh, culling uh, animals through hunting is quite beneficial. For example, in Scotland, uh, they have an epidemic of deer where um, there are no natural predators anymore and the population has just exploded and this has knock-on effects for agriculture and things like that. So uh, I couldn't give you an answer but I can see good arguments for making it illegal and for keeping it legal. So he did a great job, he gave concrete examples. That's the main takeaway I want you guys to see here. He gave specific examples of what he was talking about. This is really good. Okay. Okay. Let's do the next question. So the next one, should we, mm -hmm. should we stop logging our forests? Um, I think, I think Taiwan actually has a good forest management uh, system set up where they log their forests responsibly. And I think this is how we should do it. I do think we should log forests because we need wood for many, many of our products. However, uh, so I don't think we should stop completely. However, I do think that there are a lot of people and a lot of other countries that log the wrong way, where they use clear cutting practices, where they just cut down the entire forest. And you know that leads to desertification, which is a serious problem. Uh, but I do think we should continue logging, just maybe having laws and regulations that say how you can log. Some really good examples there, yeah. Mm. Okay, what's the next question? Why do you think bushfires happen? I think there's a combination of issues that lead to bushfires. Um, so there's the environmental ones. Um, I think with global warming, um, the sort of the, the fauna, the sort of the flora has changed a little bit. In areas like Australia, for example, mm -hmm. generally it's just drier. Uh, so there's, it's a tinderbox really, it's ready to go up. But then it's things like human action. So I know that a lot of bushfires are started by things like uh, cigarettes being uh, thrown out of cars or the odd, uh, the bottle, uh, the sun hitting the bottle with that refractive sort of effect. It starts a fire, there's a spark. Um, so I think that we need to perhaps reverse some of the global warming effects, but also educate people to stop those things like the cigarette butts, those uh, causes of fires. Uh, it's a sad situation. Okay, I've got nothing to add. Nice. <laughs> okay. So I did make a little slip there, but then I kind of corrected it, and I think that would be a natural slip, you know, between the, I said fauna, which doesn't mean plants, it means animals. But then I quickly used the right word, so I think that would be fine. Self correction. Yeah. Not too much, though. Yeah. The next question, what should governments do about overpopulation? That's a really tough question. You know, I haven't really thought about it. Give me a second to think about it. Okay, I think governments should, to, to combat overpopulation, I think governments should try to limit how many children couples have to two, okay, two children per family with incentives, you know, make it more expensive to have a third child. Mm -hmm. um, I also think what needs to be done, especially in developing countries, is their healthcare systems and their social net needs to be expanded so that um, people in these countries don't feel like they need to have so many children as a security net for themselves. That's why there is a lot of overpopulation is because Families in uh, poor developing countries need children as a labor force uh, to make sure that they don't get wiped out by something. Um, and so if they 
know that their children will survive um, their first couple years and they know that their children will be healthy and be able to support them in their future, people would have less children. So that's what I think should be done. Definitely. Good. Okay, and uh, should we have the last question? Yeah. How would you change Taiwan's wastewater management policies? Wastewater management policies. Oh, God, that is a very tricky question. Um, I have to admit that I don't know much about waste management, um, but from what I think, we're talking about recycling um, human waste, liquid waste in that term. Because I think there's a, a growing issue with the amount of drinking water in the world. So I think, um, for one, you probably have to build bigger recycling plants for urine. Um, I'm not quite sure how they do this exactly, but I imagine it's some sort of evaporation or hopefully a filtering system somewhere. Um, I think that's key. Um, but apart from that, uh, perhaps it's also how much water we waste. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, it's, for example, washing up. Perhaps we should limit how much water we're allowed to mm -hmm. use in washing up. Also, washing ourselves taking a, a shower rather than taking a bath but to be honest I'm no expert but this is what I think. What would you uh, recommend uh, the governments do about um, factory pollutants? You know how uh, factories yeah. are polluting yeah. local water? I, I think this could be a, a, a big problem when it comes to uh, preserving water sources so I think they should have uh, heavy sanctions on this, they should definitely have laws enforced to stop over pollutants, uh, over pollution of, of riverways. A good example that comes to mind is quite near where I live, there's a river, the Keelong River, and a few months ago it was just full of dead fish. And I cannot think of any other reason apart from the fact that there are lots of factories along that riverway. Um, there must be a connection there. And the government should definitely sh stop that sort of thing. Okay. Tricky question. <laughs> but you see, I didn't know anything about that. So no. I just sort of was honest. Mm -hmm. And as I was speaking, things started popping in my head and then I expanded the answer that way. Why were you able to do this? Because he's a native speaker. <laughs> and <laughs> so... <laughs> but but how, how could you do this? Well, it's using the brainstorming methods that we have. The more you work on this, the better you're going to do. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it in my vocabulary notebook. Ho oh, ho, just like you should be <laughs> yeah. doing. And if you don't know what a vocab notebook is, we did a brilliant video about that, and you can check it out here. Okay. Okay, guys, so this is just one way that you can prepare for the speaking test, and one way that you can start aiming for those higher band scores. So make sure if you've got any of those questions that we didn't talk about, leave us a comment in the comment section and we will get back to you. Until next time, guys. See, See you later. <laughs> okay. Hey, cool. yeah. Okay, I think I'm done. Me too. Okay. Our colors never changed. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what did change was the fact that you're working on mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on yours. <laughs> okay, good idea. Let's change the bend. And then over there? In, in the corner. In the, yeah. blue, in the blue corner of doom. <laughs> it says, should we use uh, less something?